Fact of the Year. divided into four parts of approximately equal length. These parts are called seasons. These seasons are called summer, fall, winter, and spring. What these seasons do to weather patterns varies from place to place. For example, around the equator, which would be the center of the Earth, if one folded out into a 2D surface, they basically have one season. They technically have four seasons, but it's hot all year round, so it's basically one season. But around the poles, which can be thought of as the top and bottom of the Earth, it's completely different. They have long periods of darkness and long periods of light, which can be thought of as their seasons. However, in the mid-latitudes, we have four distinct seasons. We have summer, which in general is hot. Fall, which in general is warm but cooling. Winter, which in general is cold, and spring, which in general is cool but warming. I like to think of summer and winter as the two main seasons, and fall just a transition from summer to winter, and spring just a transition from winter to summer. Spring lasts from around March 21st to June 21st. Summer lasts from around June 21st to September 21st. Fall lasts from around September 21st to December 21st and winter lasts from around December 21st to March 21st. In the Northern Hemisphere. If we assume that summer is the opposite of winter, and autumn is the opposite of spring, autumn is, by the way, another word for fall, then whatever season it is in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the opposite in the Southern Hemisphere. For example, if it's summer in the Northern Hemisphere, then it's winter in the Southern Hemisphere, and vice versa. If it's autumn in the Northern Hemisphere, then it's spring in the Southern Hemisphere, and vice versa. So let's say the sun is the sun, which it is, and that basketball is the Earth. The Earth is tilted on its axis, about 23.5 degrees. This varies over time, but we won't take that into account. But because the Earth is tilted, one hemisphere is facing closer to the sun than the other is. This hemisphere is facing summer and the other hemisphere is facing winter. Assume that the hemisphere facing summer right now is the northern hemisphere. As the Earth rotates around the sun, it maintains this constant angle relative to it. So therefore, when it reaches the other side of the sun, which let's pretend we're on right now, then in this case, the southern hemisphere would be facing summer because it's facing towards the sun, while the northern hemisphere is facing winter. In the summertime, there are more hours of daylight. The day with the most hours of daylight is the summer solstice, June 21st, the first day of summer. The day with the fewest amount of hours of daylight is the winter solstice, December 21st, the first day of winter. In the Northern Hemisphere, the first day of autumn is called the autumn equinox, and the first day of spring is called the vernal equinox. We call them equinoxes because at these points, the amount of sunlight in the northern and southern hemispheres are about the same. To adjust with these longer days, what we do is that instead of just dealing with it and going to bed in broad daylight, we set our clocks for an hour. So what would regularly be 7 o'clock would be 8 o'clock. Six months later, we move our clocks back an hour for regular time. The problem is that, near the equator, they don't need daylight savings time, so they don't celebrate it. And some areas celebrate it at different times than others. This dramatically complicates things. And that is the amazingly complicated methods of keeping time that is featured here on Earth. Have a nice day!